little fish. I'm so <laughs> excited to have you here. You're back in South Africa. Or should yeah. I say I am back in South you Africa? You back in South Africa. I, you New know, York. we keep up via the Insta streets. I yeah. can't keep up with you. Yeah. So listen, so you my podcast is called Hyphen Happening. You and have if a podcast, you right? <laughs> so I have a podcast. Yeah. And if you didn't know, so we always say like if something is hyped, how did it happen? Yeah. And you know, the thing is on a serious note, I love your career. Like I just feel like Thank it's you. not even just about the brands you work on. There's something about just the way you approach your role. It feels like you're so invested in the community and culture. Yeah. And I feel like our lives have been going parallel like that because yeah. yeah. often I would look and say, hey, you know what? There's a lot you're doing I can take out. Yeah. And so today I didn't want to do the typical tell us how to get into marketing. Yeah. I really wanted to get in deep and understand like where are you mentally right now? Because yeah. I could argue marketing has shifted so much in the last three yeah. years, right? Yeah. So we're just going to get into it, have a loose chat, have a Heineken, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. get into it. Okay, cool. So the first one, right? I think that I want to say, if I come back to my FMCG days, Thursday is quite a busy day for you, right? Rather. You know what I mean? You're leading up to the weekend. Is there such a thing as a typical Thursday for you? And, and how do you structure your week? Yeah, so a Thursday does start off having uh, podcast chats with Tesh. Uh, if this could become a weekly thing, it'll be great. Yeah. No, but on a serious note, yeah, Thursdays, uh, every day is a busy day, I think, in everyone's yeah. lives, uh, yeah. especially with today and social media. There's so much being fed to you right. and your day job and personal life. Absolutely. So just a normal week for me is simply yeah. just lay, the lay of the land. Yeah. Looking outside of marketing, if you, if you look at like the business objectives that right. we need to do, look right. at our objectives for the week. Mm -hmm. And most importantly also, since check with your team, how they're doing, what's mm -hmm. happening in their lives, etc. Yeah. And just map out that week together collectively with your partner agencies, mm -hmm. etc. Exactly. So we very much, uh, very operational, but yeah. we're trying to look up and see the future and yeah. see where we're actually Absolutely. operating to get to that end goal. Because it's weird, right? Because I think, you know, when you move into leadership, you know, it's like this book that no one hands you. It's that dusty book yeah, where yeah. it's not just about the job to be done it's about making sure the humans are fine yeah. and I said this to Joe on episode one you know on, at L'Oreal making sure that the humans are fine make sure the business is fine and I think the biggest one which I'm very personal about is my agencies because yeah. you know I come from an agency background and it's constantly checking in like are they well equipped and are they okay mentally yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so it's, so it's nice to understand that you know and you know the thing is when I look at your career you've you've been fortunate enough to work a global role or global yeah. roles and you've come back and I'm always obsessed with how people gear themselves up for challenges yeah. um, I often talk on the podcast about operating outside your comfort zone 100%. talk to me about that time when you got that call it's like yo yeah. you need to leave South Africa okay yeah. goodbye I and, and yo, what were the lessons that you had to learn like when you you and the family were literally plunked into a brand new territory yeah now I remember that call vividly like um, I'll never forget it was in September, got okay. the call, yeah. and I said, when do you start? And you know, every corporate yeah. gig, no, yesterday. And um, I think it was very unsettling, both from a mm. personal point of view and professional point yeah. of view, because moving just from Cape Town to Johannesburg, mm. it's easy mm. for some people, maybe not all the Cape Townians, no disrespect. Yeah, you know, so. um, but I'm uh, Team Durban, I'm just saying. Team Durban, yeah. yeah, I love everyone yeah. in every country, <laughs> uh, every city that is. Yeah. But moving to Amsterdam was, it was a privilege, and also in terms of like, just setting up your mindset of, what are we going to go? Because we were going to the unknown, complete unknown. Yeah. And for me, what I took out of it was sitting with my wife, who, by the way, was two months, uh, I mean, sorry, nine months pregnant and gave birth a month before we left. Stop. To Amsterdam. Oh, my God, that is heroic. So wow. if everyone's out there listening, moving with a one-month-old baby was quite special. Because isn't, what's the saying? It's like the top five stressful things, getting a new job, moving, moving. and having a kid, and you guys did all we of did it. All of that, though. Wow. Yeah, so um, it was quite traumatic. But I think we set up our goals of what we wanted yeah. after that experience. And a lot of people go, yeah, we want to go to global. We want to, you know, earn the euros or dollars or wherever you go. Yeah. The thing is, is what do you want to get out of that global Absolutely. stint? Do you want to learn something? Do you want to travel? Is it going there to save and then come back and plow all your learnings that you, you took from that experience exactly. back into your home country, which is South Africa? Yeah. Um, and South Africa for me was, it was always the end goal. Um, yes, yeah. Quite frankly, yes, we want to stay a bit longer. Yeah. But people don't know how, how good you have it in South Africa. Right. I say this is coming so back well. now as yeah. well. We have to appreciate the good and the bad. Yeah, you know? the grass is maybe not always green on the other side. The you, artificial you grass? To, yeah, artificial. We yeah. take your own manure to make it uh, green exactly, on the other side. Exactly. But yeah. from a mindset, we really have to be open to mm -hmm. learn things. Yeah. Uh, and when we were there, I mean, Desh, the, the beauty about it is that even for my wife, it was who ended her career to go with me. Sure, yeah. It's like understanding the nuggets and the things you want to learn about, be it consumers. Yeah 
you know, the community and how people act on that side mm. to really learn to bring it back into South Africa. Absolutely. And I think that's the golden nuggets I want to learn that we, we were mm. like flies on walls, just listening, seeing, yes, yes. but also enjoying. Yeah, we traveled exactly. uh, to learn different cultures, yeah. way people think, way people address you in uh, the likes of uh, France versus mm. Belgium versus, oh you know where I'm going with the that. Nordics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was very very eye-opening to yeah. learn about other people, yeah. cultures, and diverse thinking. Mm. Um, and I think that made us as a family more enriched yeah. in terms of just our experience. Yeah. But that's what you want to give back now exactly. to the rest of your community like in South that. Africa. Um, and, I, and I think that also it's, it's nice to put yourself outside the comfort zone so you know what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. And I feel like selfishly, if I'm speaking about my own career, there's always that golden light, like, okay, I want to make it to global. But then when you're actually to what you're saying, when you're there, there's the job to be done. You realize, yeah. okay, I am representing everyone that in the future wants to walk my path, 100%. right? And when you come back, it's not a sense of, oh, why did you come back to South Africa? Yeah. I think it's about being so bold and mature to say, actually, you know what? I have more impact to drive here. Because, you know, you and I have had conversations about what we want to do for Africa, yeah. you know, and it's a bold task. And, and I I think I can get take. Especially it's with achievable. you in the corner. Yeah, yes, we're all in different corners, yeah, yeah. you know. And I think, you know, there's there's so many nuggets in that and I hope for everyone that's listening or watching, they can take that advice and know that it's not just about the green grass and the yeah. sparkly little title. It's really about putting yourself out there and saying, I'm gonna put those hard yards, you 100%. know? Yeah. Um, and you know, you, you touched on a bit of the consumer and there's a few questions I actually have. Yeah. Some that I haven't told you, I'm gonna throw it at you, of right? Of course. But, you know, coming back to it, you know, often you could say, ah, oh, a brand is a brand, right? It doesn't matter where I'm sitting because you've got your insights team, you've got obviously all the yeah. data and the numbers. But, you know, when you're in a different market, how did you find that you connected with the consumer there? Because they're so different to South Africans. Did you feel you had to give yourself that runway to learn those markets 100%. before you felt like, I got this? Yeah, you have to give yourself the time. You have mm. to be lenient on yourself to learn the consumer, okay. learn the market dynamics and what's yeah. happening. So the beauty of what everyone thinks, they're very unique in different markets, but there is a golden thread in okay. terms of insight and what's happening in the market. It might be yeah. named something different in terms of a, a territory or a demand space, mm. like in terms of what consumers are thinking. Yeah. But the narrative is still the same. Sure. So if someone's struggling with, uh, let's just say, um, wanting to tap into a certain uh, demographic, yeah. you might have it in South Africa or Romania when I went there and saw some similarities, mm. for, uh, quite funny yeah. enough. So there's some things that happen in Brazil mm. that you can learn from and bring it to South Got Africa. It. So you have to give yourself the time yeah. to learn and humble yourself that you don't know everything That's and you have thing. to learn. Mm. You have to learn. And the beauty of it is you can yeah. craft it yeah. and then feed it back to the market exactly. because the beauty of a global role, you work with different individuals Absolutely. and it can be customized if it's uh, I always say Mandarin it's a wrong term. It's not that you're a sales rep, yeah, yeah. but you know, you have to learn the art of communicating. Because yeah. on the flip side, I remember when I worked on whiskey, having a bad, and I don't like to use the word bad, but someone that can't communicate effectively, you're not taking that toolkit and adapting it the way yeah. it needed to yeah. be, you know? You're trying to explain to them this is what needs to be done. I really like that. So, okay, let's shift gears a little bit, right? So we kind of know a bit about your background and I think that the global part has been been a real big step change for you. You've yeah. come back to South Africa, and how do you feel that has influenced the way you're driving your career now for the next few years? Yeah. yeah. So, interesting, I think a career is ever evolving, and, and people sometimes when they get into marketing, yeah. they think it's very linear. Yes. So, I need to go from, let's start like a junior brand yes. manager, brand manager, yes. etc. The beauty of yeah. it is that it's, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you can go left, you can go right, etc. So I'm very optimistic in terms yeah. of like what's next. Okay. Um, it does not have to be in marketing. My last role was actually business development. Yeah. Um, so very commercial yeah. in terms of how you approach things from a, let's say, a cost perspective, Absolutely. profitability, There's et no time for fluff as people no, assume people in marketing love to There is no ROI in fluff. Yes, um, yes, yes. So for career-wise, okay. I think I'm very optimistic about what's to come. Got it. What's to come? I don't know. I mean, if I had to ask you, where do you see yourself in a year's time? I don't know. There's so much opportunity. Exactly. What I do say is that all marketers that is listening to this, you need to be you know, open to going left and right, mm. going to roles that will you know that what you want to get out of mm. it. Is it trade marketing? Is it sales? Yeah. And become more of a commercial yeah. business individual versus just go linear in marketing. Absolutely. And you know, a tip I always say is that if you can't afford to maybe, if you think of just a typical brand, right? If you can't go from brand management to customer marketing and then insights, yeah. normally there's like four or five roles that nestle the brand yeah. itself, then also lean into your agencies. You know, I sound like a broken record, but spend as much time with 
them yeah. everything from your ECD to your account director because sometimes you find like you know oh wow I never thought that that avenue is where my passion comes alive and and fun enough you say that yeah. that's how important relationships is because mm. you might just find your music in something else yes oh I like and, that and honestly once you find that yeah. uh, the, in your career can change dramatically Absolutely. and hence it could be a winding road versus a linear path so Absolutely. I think relationships and maybe it's diving into the next question yeah I think it's fundamental in terms mm -hmm. of the output that you actually get. Yeah. If your relationship is is not as strong and understanding the back end of what you know Deshnia has yeah. to go through from an agency, now you move client side. Sure. They understand your back end, like then you can appreciate what everyone is adding to the pot. Though. Absolutely. And no, so I if you that. down. I'm down because exactly. I understand why. Exactly. And it's, it's like a We're like in a people match. business if you think about it, we right? Are in a yeah. Business, yeah. And I feel like sometimes when you study for this stuff, they don't tell you that. No. You know, it's very textbook. Like, this is how you read your numbers, how to approach your PL. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we need to do psychology lessons yeah, yeah, here, you yeah. know? Okay, so let's shift gears now. So I feel like, you know, the guys out there got to know a bit more about the man behind the brand now. And now you're sitting with this challenge. I mean, you, you, you are obviously at the helm of some great brands. You know, when we think of the consumer, and I'm not going to lie, I'm still struggling with. With this this consumer has changed so much and now we're after gen z yeah. i mean don't quote me on this but what is it? the oldest gen z is like 25 26 yeah. now how would you say or where's your mindset regarding this new consumer is it a constant battle for you yeah. to try and understand where they are how they operate when yeah. you're thinking about your team and how you approach marketing no that's a very good question and i think what I've learned over the time now is that I think everyone, that every single brand is chasing Gen Z's and that everyone's on a recruitment strategy. Yes, yes you're on a recruitment strategy, yes. but let's also not forget about your existing base. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, yes, you can tap and recruit. It's like yeah. uh, what we've learned is that it's a leaky bucket. So your Yo. bucket is full, it's leaking at the bottom, yeah. and you can fall on the top. Fire and shove. Yeah. 100% our mm -hmm. brands grow. Yeah. But it's still a bucket though. Exactly. So for us, what we, we try to do is diversify our marketing okay. approach and really speak to the passion points about mm. the Gen Z's, yeah. but still keep, keep your base. Yes. So we do look at our whole fundamental uh, marketing A and P yep. and approach, and we split it according to that. Got like yeah. a little bit to recruitment, a little bit to partnerships, mm. a little bit to our core. Mm. And then obviously the baby boomers will, will give you something at the you end know, of the you day. Have to I'm, listen, I'm a baby boomer. Listen, you know. um, but the, yeah. the, the funny thing is, is that I have a younger brother and yeah. it's, it's interesting to like to sit and listen to what what are, yeah. what are you interested in? It's just like the way they think and they exactly. operate is fundamentally different Not to what we are. Not even what they listen, how they listen. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I, I look through my sister as well. I'm like, oh, are those the type of playlists that 100%. you're into? No, okay. but even what you said now about listen, yeah. if you speak to them, engage them, and you mm. ask them to play back what they just said now, yeah. they took out nuggets, they didn't hear the yes, whole sentence. Yeah. They took out what they wanted to hear. Absolutely. So it's a, I think it's an exciting time for Gen Z's and even yeah. younger, the, yeah. the generation to yeah. come of how fundamentally marketing is going to change, mm. how AI is going to tap into us. Um, and if you're not at the cusp of learning at least about how to implement mm. it into your marketing strategies, mm. you're going to be left dead in the water. Exactly. This but I love what you were saying about like, because I think people don't get this enough. It's always shiny object syndrome. Like, okay, now the Gen Z, or even if you take it on the opposite side, AI, you need to go after it. But what is actually the foundation? Who is your base? And we come from a background of handling brands where volume is important, and right? Yeah. And this is why I get frustrated with marketing of big brands where you see this new shiny approach and then the next thing, your whole look and feel is so divorced. Yeah. And then people are looking in and they just want to grab a beer that they know. They know the iconography, yeah. the yeah. color, but now yeah. you've completely changed you've it changed. up, you know? Yeah. I do think it's important to change, but I think that you have to take it on a journey. It has it's, to be a journey. it's like with anything. Yeah. Like you're not going to lose weight all of a sudden, right? No. You have to repeatedly go do the healthy eating, the exercise, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, something that's equal and opposite is culture. And you actually spoke about it earlier around partnerships. Yeah. But we were talking more about partnerships in terms of like peer to peer. Yeah. Now, if you flip the script, right, I think when you talk about your Gen Z, a lot of it arguably comes through culture. Even millennials, hey, like, don't, don't throw us out. Like, millennials mm -hmm. are important. Mm -hmm. Think about culture and your brands and how you've handled it. Talk to me about partnerships, you know, because the thing that I said in my last podcast, everyone wants to pitch to a brand. So I was talking yeah. to someone on the opposite end okay. and I asked him, like, you know, brands come at you. How do yeah. you say yes and no? For someone that's leading a team, how do you guys identify who's cool and credible in culture? Is there a matrix you have or is it something you're constantly working on? Yeah. yeah. So there is no matrix and there's no yeah. winning formula. Yeah. However, you have to look, and I think it goes back to what you said about your base and, yeah. and the brand and what Absolutely. they stand for. And then really look at how you're going to drive difference and meaning and more importantly, tell a story. Mm. And with the partnerships comes like understanding what's their objectives mm. and what's our objectives and do we, do, does it feel yes. like yes. a partnership? Absolutely. Because anyone can just do a partnership. 
And if you do a partnership, consumers will see straight through it. Especially for brands like yours, where it's notorious that you may have big budgets. 100%. These are assumptions. Everybody wants to pitch to you. So you need to understand how does it fit into the whole mix and the story yeah. to tell each other's story. It's not yeah. just that I'm coming to latch onto you, you're cool now. Absolutely. Um, but I think it's beyond just cool. It's, it's also like the change makers. Like you really want to be part of someone that is, you know, you can see them, they, they may be not relevant right now, mm. but that's the beauty of culture. Yes, not right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. In a couple of years time, you're going to sit back and go, wow, this, uh, this individual we worked with nine years ago. Mm. Um, I'll mention a guy, uh, yeah. Yay, um, Russ. Yeah. He, he, he mentioned to us his first corporate gig was with Heineken. Wow. And that was nine years ago. That is insane. And look at the gentleman now. Very proud of him, etc. But it's about building a relationship yeah. and understanding the journey because it can't be a one it wonder as well. Absolutely not. So it's, it's, very, it's very starting like what does the brand want out of it? What do they want out of it? And how do you find that synergy and partnership? Absolutely. Um, and it's like a muscle, right? You constantly have to do you it. And especially like it. if you're changing roles, that's something I find. I find like the energy will change like if I move, say, from whiskey to beer. But it comes back to when we were talking about you as a person, yeah. you need to be actively invested in culture. So you, you bring to. and influence all yeah. the companies or brands you join, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you know, actually, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but you actually mentioned to me a brand that you really love and you feel like they're the <laughs> forefront of culture. Yeah, yeah, and people are gonna think, yeah, yeah, people are going to think we're going to talk about a typical, like, maybe a beer brand yeah, or something. Yeah. But talk to us about the one that you shared earlier on. So the one, and I might not butcher it, but Keith? <laughs> yes, because I thought it was Kite. <laughs> yeah. So K-I-T-H. K-I-T-H, K-I-T-H guys. Yeah. K-I-T-H. I love, I love how, if you just look at the, how they curate things and yeah. how they do partnerships, yeah. it seems the word is seamless and authentic yeah. again. Yeah. You almost, it's so blurry that you can't tell who actually did the partnership. Mm. Is it them? Is it the likes of Adidas? Yeah. They... Just the whole palette, the storyline, etc. Yeah. It seems so genuine that you think that that's a brand on its own. Mm. And so that's what I love about it is yeah. that they're at the forefront Absolutely. of setting the tone and the pace about call it culture, music, fashion, Absolutely. whatever they get involved in. They're not like boxing themselves. Not they're just songs. fluid about culture. And right? that's a beautiful word. They are fluid about mm. everything. And mm. that's the thing that I think some brands maybe get a bit stuck with is that yes, yes. yes we may be a brand, uh, any brand, yeah. then you play only in that realm. Mm. And I think that's what people are really trying to push mm -hmm. the boundaries. And you do see some weird things, like I've seen mm -hmm. uh, Crocs and KFC. No disrespect to them, I love them. <laughs> but <laughs> Crocs is a uh, big, I love uh, them. Love them. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll talk about KFC, yeah. but I think there's there's a lot of collaborations that you feel like, but why did they do that? Some yeah. is shocking, but yeah. then some is like, I don't like, get I love I what you guys have done on Seoul, you know, especially yeah. with like the furniture stuff, because again, you're looking at a brand where you feel like it needs to be in a very traditional space. And if you're going to delve out, maybe you do a fashion partnership, yeah. maybe you do sneakers. But again, the, what you guys do, are doing as a group, you're like, mm, let's look at the consumer, what they need. And I remember being served yeah. that, yeah. you know, I didn't yeah. buy, sorry. Did you buy? I oh. didn't. I was waiting for in, friends in, and family interview, to come. Thank you. <laughs> no, but kudos. The, the Seoul brand is a great case study, but yeah. Warwick was actually running that together nice. with the, the rap team and the designers. But yeah. to your point, they won yeah. an award for that because it was well recognized and yeah. Yeah. through it wasn't just in two months we're going to turn something out yeah. the storyline was was Absolutely. was there though. and you know speaking of that because i remember i was served to it via google ads <laughs> i know this is people think we're cool but we are very nerdy right oh, we talk that's... about seo but you know talking about your media mix right i am obsessed with people answering this question where do creators or influencers sit in your marketing mix i'm so curious to know yeah. and any anything that you want to share about how you've I'm, I don't want to say the word is ROI because we're all figuring that out. But you know, you obviously have to go to the business and say, I want to yeah. invest. Yeah. And maybe you need to dial down other channels. Where are you placing yeah. your money? So it's interesting. I'm talking to a content influencer, <laughs> content creator, influencer herself. Um, no, but it's a fair question because even yeah. in the global uh, structure when I was there, mm. it was asked. And I mean, that was six years ago. Yeah. Uh, and how it's transformed over the years, it's similar to AI. It's, yeah. it's, it's again fluid. Yeah. It's operating yeah. at light speed. And anyone almost these days, I mean, can just bounce in and then they're a content creator or influencer. Right? It's, it's Don't unbelievable. Don't you feel like people also, and I mean, we can talk about this in five hours, overnight success. Overnight success. Like, people are going from their feed to New York Fashion Week, um, literally. Totally. Right? But then again, also coming back to the partnerships, then yeah. people want to jump onto that. And then that's why it seems inauthentic. Absolutely. I mean, let the person shine and do their thing mm. and then come and understand the whole mix. Mm. Coming back to content creators. Yeah. They are, I think they have a, a right at the table, yep. part of the whole ecosystem. They have their fair share, or they should be given, that's the message, yeah. should be given their fair okay. share in terms of investment. Sure. And treated like any other media buying channel. Mm. 
that KPIs, yes, ROI, absolutely. everything, because they are a channel. Mm. If you're not looking mm. looking at them as a channel, then you are just treating them mm. as just two content, two pieces of uh, influence. And even bring them into the boardroom. I used to do that a you lot. I would to. say, literally, I don't want to go just through my agency. Yeah. You say, I love what you said now. You give them a seat at the table. Let them set it how they want yeah. to as well. Because right? that will even improve the content and mm. the storytelling. Yeah. Because if you just give them a brief and go, Please, uh, what's the, the hashtag? Uh, dress with me or get ready with yes. me. Oh uh, my God. Uh, yeah. Shoot me now. Yeah. Um, you have to bring yeah. into the table, design what the language you want and the look and feel. Yeah. And there's some good content creators that, you know, they can get the message got clearer, mm. faster Absolutely. than a TV ad or a radio burst, mm. etc. So Absolutely. No, I like that. And I think, you know, and we won't get into it today, but for those that need to know, even how you pay your creators, you're now understanding that they are creative directors. So I love seeing line items called out, like I need to pay for my dress, I need to pay for my creative time, my strategy, and yeah. then it's my platform fee. Yeah. And I think the more astute brand people are, or your teams are, you're gonna recognize it's not just about, oh, she gave me 30K, she gave me 60, let's go with 30K. Yeah. It's not like 100%. that, because we wouldn't want to be paid for our roles based yeah. on that, yeah. right? Um, so but also, I think to build on that, just to, yeah. I'm sorry if you interrupt, I think a lot of marketers should look at it as part of the mm. digital scope. Mm. And because sometimes they look at it separate and it's the last agenda Yeah, item. like they push it with PR, right? 100%. And PR and, a lot, and also PR is very subjective. Okay. People don't know how to manage PR. Yes. Is it the media press release mm. and da 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 da? With content creators, or you know, you could look at it content creators and mm. content production. And how that does it fit part of your digital and social strategy? Yeah, yeah. And they are arm of it though. It could mm. be a rewards partnership Absolutely. and then and then you'll see how your investments start playing around. Like is it paid ads yeah. or them? I like that. I think that's a nugget we definitely have to replay back because something that just inspired me now is you could also use them for like your insights, you know, because you know we have our annual brand planning, whether it's in July or Jan, as you build up your annual brand plan. And, you know, there could be a nice room for them to sit in and say, hey, how do they consume yeah. a Heineken, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where are they consuming it? And that could even influence your on-trade outlets, you Completely. know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think influencer stuff or creative stuff don't, don't always have to be outward facing. Yeah. It's about really tapping into this, yeah. right? Speaking of this, okay, yeah. I mean, you know, I've got this phone, I've got that phone, I've got my podcast, like I am just at capacity of absorbing stuff, like mm. insights. I want to know, someone like you, you've got so much on the go and you've got such a massive portfolio, how do you keep up with trends? And maybe if I want to be super specific, yeah. are you a person that's more of a reader? Are you on the podcast vibe or do you just get it through your feed? Yeah. I'd love to know. And I know you love having chats with people too, because I'm, <laughs> I'm that too. Okay, that was one of my answers yeah. though. So I think it's it's a number of things and it's also been deliberate about it. Yeah. So one, I, I definitely make the time mm. to reflect mm. on be it work, be it where I'm going, etc. Because sometimes you're so in a rush with um, be it your podcast and busy, li busy life, yeah. is that maybe you want to take back and some of the nuggets, all the interviews you've had, etc. Yeah. And you go, I want to investigate a little bit more of that. So time to review and reflect sure. is super important. Okay. I have lots of chats and lots have of meeting to, with a lot of, um, you want to call it influential or people in the know about certain segments. So very much outside of FMCG uh, or let's say alcohol. Yeah. It is in FMCG, but maybe the banking industry, etc. So you can see the macro trends mm -hmm. and insights and go, maybe that's something we should be branching or in looking into, etc. Nice. Um, so from that is chat. I do read a lot, yeah. um, but I, I read more from a, a business point of view and also understanding what's happening in, in South Africa. You, yeah. you have to be aware of it. Absolutely. Uh, and everyone goes, you know, something's happening in South Africa. It might be happening in in uh, Europe or in mm, APAC, etc. Mm, exactly. And that for me is like a simple something um, which I wanted to mention yeah. also in the chat earlier, is that something so small and niche that you may have saw like two years ago, sure. you then don't realize how big it's going to become and, and mm. globally expand. So one of the examples that I've yeah. been very close about is what's happening in Korea. Yeah. And if you look at Korean trends and how it's exploded, Squid Game, I mean, everything. K-pop, right? All of that. And now you can see brands are jumping in. They're yeah. having like soju into yes. their drinks, etc. Yes, yes. Um, so a lot of the Korean-inspired yeah. food, ways and things is popping up everywhere in South Africa. Yeah. Korean barbecues, etc. Yeah. And just overnight, slowly you see mm, popping. It's become a way of life. But yeah. it was zoned in niche and then how it just grew. Got it. Similar, similar I to again that. in America, where everyone went on the, the health trend and it was salsas and it was white claw, etc. I worked on a salsa in, in, yeah. in global as well. Yeah. But it's just to learn a little bit outside of the category. So Absolutely. what trends are happening elsewhere and you just 
just investigate a little bit, mm. just a little bit, not and to be the speak expert from on like, it. Not knowledge, but I know that whenever I would, uh, you know, entertain my global uh, counterparts, yeah. they're looking for a bit more than just representing what your brand's doing in the region. Yeah. And I would even say, and I know you're also a big believer of that, the rest of Africa. Sometimes as South Africans, we're just so here and just looking at, I mean, I love marketing in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. It's big, it's bold, unapologetic. And I always sit down with counterparts <laughs> there and I'm just like, okay, I may not have those budgets just yet, yeah. but there's a lot of that bravery that I can take. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah. I'm with you on the reading thing, but I just like, oh, I couldn't carry the books anymore. So I'm on the audio no, no, books no, no, now. Books. No, 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 I'm not into audio books, yeah. but I, I might read a little article that's yes. maybe served on my mobile phone. Exactly. Or I grab yeah. it in the newspaper, etc. Yeah. I'm not having books. I'm not a book yes, reader. Exactly. Let's get it clear. I'm going to be honest, I'm not, I'm not that girl. <laughs> I'm not carrying books around. Even um, on the plane, I'll have my no. beats on. No, no, no. I'm listening to a I think I had two books in my life as Brian Sharp, and yes? I was called The Game. But, okay, uh, nice. Yeah, my friend will know yeah, about yeah. The Game. It's, okay, cool. And then there even came a series of Being the Best Wingman. It's very funny. Oh, Let's nice. Check okay, no, lots of nuggets I need to unpack yeah. from this. So, you know, uh, we started off talking about you and then how you approached your brand and such. And I almost want to bring it back to you now. When I look at it, you can be a brand manager or a head of marketing, whatever the title is, yeah. and you could, it can thrive through your agency, you know, because yeah. things can be tick box, you know, yeah. you make sure you're just driving your numbers, commercially in what to do, or you can be entrepreneurial. Yeah. I think the latter is what I feel you're driving. Oh, thank you. He, he, you, didn't, he didn't pay me to say that, but you know, and I, cause I'm like that and my circle is like that, you know, people often follow us on LinkedIn and they're like, are they making it hard for themselves? Yeah, like, yeah, why do yeah. they have to go so extra, so hard? What kind of fuels that passion of yours? Why do you approach marketing like that? Uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. I'm a bit dumbstruck by it. Um, <laughs> but thank you for the yeah, compliment. Yeah. I think in everything that uh, I may have tackled in life, be it from a work front or a sure. personal point of view, I am very invested in it though. Uh, right down to the people and knowing their children, etc. And wanting others to, to thrive and, mm. and succeed. I think being entrepreneurial is good, but also having a strong relationship with your people and your agencies is, is integral yeah. because you need to know what's happening in everyone else's lives. You, you to. need to. Yeah. Being entrepreneurial is what will drive that process because you need to take it upon yourself mm -hmm. to have the, the coffee chat, I remember, yeah. and let's meet up, let's understand. And absolutely. also because then you learn, you, you absolutely learn about yeah. this individual. And I've learned so much from you, Thank like you. in terms of how you approach things, yeah. what you've done on a social digital mm. side. And it's, it's inspiring because yeah. then it makes me want to become a better individual, maybe exactly. a little bit about that field. Absolutely. And I think that's the fundamental. It's a balancing yeah. act. You can't go full tilt around your own flag, entrepreneurial. Absolutely. You have to focus on your people and, mm. and bring them part of Absolutely. that journey though. And you know, when you say that, because, and, and it's not that type of podcast, but you know, we can look a lot at mental health. There's a lot that we mm. go through. And I think people can often look at the, you know, the brands and the titles. I remember going through a very dark space when um, it was just before COVID. You know, it was a tough time yeah, for alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were banned, right? Yeah. And it really challenged me personally and professionally, specifically the space that I was in. But it was the relationships that I leaned into, you know, where they said, it's just a moment, it's not forever. Yeah you can still come alive you can prove your worth yeah. and to what you were saying when we do have those coffee chats and I still remember our first one it's about having a sense of vulnerability yeah. and saying you know what this person is seeing me for me and knowing that even if tomorrow and I don't want to say a bad brand <laughs> but even if I have to go say to banking yeah. I'm still the person that they feel they want to connect with because yeah. often people look at us but they don't really see us they yeah. see our brand yeah Marcel Heineken yeah. No, but it's not that. It's actually Marcel, yeah. the person, yeah. and it could be on brand X, Y, Z afterwards. That is so true, eh? You know, I, I do think a banking brand's gonna phone you tomorrow after this podcast <laughs> Great, and offer you listen, something. You know, but but it's so true, and and it's something I want to add to that. And yeah. a lot of people may forget that you are your own brand. Yes. Don't yes. don't don't yes. Be passionate about the brand that you work on for the yeah. time, but don't let it overshadow the brand that you are. Absolutely. Because people must remember you. It's like when you're not there. That's they say about leadership. A leadership is when you're not there and people still can lead themselves. Sure. And the, the key thing about being your own brand is ensuring that you have five people that's going to speak positively about your brand. Exactly. And I'm not talking about your line manager. No. I'm talking about your no. five people that will carry that brand Absolutely. for Dish. Or you for know, Marcel. they say like it's about who speaks for you in rooms that you'll never get to. So true. You know, and, and I did that recently. It's not about trying to give myself brownie points, but I knew that this particular individual, the name was not going to be brought up. And I spoke, you know, ad nauseum. Yeah. And they were like, wow, we never saw it. And I was like, you know, Dish, like, this is, it made me feel so good, yeah. you know, because it's each one teach one. Yeah. We were talking about leadership, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's no manual. I feel like 
being a people leader is one of the hardest things yeah. to do. No, no manual, no podcast, nothing. nothing, you know? And it's something you have to consistently work yeah. at. So now we're sitting at Feb. I mean, it feels like it's June, you yeah. know? How have you kicked off the year inspiring your team? And talk to me a bit much a bit about how you approach that, you know? Because sometimes you feel you have to be hands-on. Yeah. Sometimes you have to leave them to do what they need to do. I'd love to understand a bit more about you as the leader. No, thanks. That's a, that's a great question. And there is no textbook or manual. Like I said, maybe it's a podcast we should do together. That's your podcast, not mine. Okay. I'm good, yeah. Well, I Thanks. guess that's a business opportunity for me to follow up. <laughs> but I think, um, maybe speaking out of turn, but 2023 was a bit of a tough year for a lot of people, uh, business-wise or so. And a lot of people were like near burnout, etc. But to inspire people is really take stock of what we've achieved and celebrate the small wins. I think for the start of the year, what really tried to land with my team and, and a bit of having an influence on the rest of the department and also the business is that you need to take stock of your whole life. Work is one thing, okay. and you have goals, but you also have your spiritual, yourself, your well-being, okay. etc. So the whole looking at your life in totality, and then how do we coach one another to say, you can't show up 100% every single day in every single field. So take stock of where you are, and then we'll have a discussion. So the team has really worked hard in terms of self-reflection and review of where we're going, and now we've set our goals in terms of not just only work, for yourself, etc. Nice. So it's a holistic view in yeah. terms of like what does one individual on my team want to achieve career-wise and then also from a spiritual health thing. So I think it's not only work. Mm. I think it's a lot of people get, they take their work and it overshadows their whole life. Absolutely. Um, which is fine for a certain time. I mean, we've all made project. that mistake. Yeah. I've yeah. done that. You know, you literally become that brand. But Completely. I love what you're saying because I've had a, a leader like yourself where she actually took the time to say, hey, Dish, you know what? Let me try to understand what's going on in your world. And, you know, those that know me know that you get me in the morning, afternoon, you'll never get yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I'm, I'm very bubbly. So yeah. my energy... You bubbly. Mm. Yeah. You know, and then my energy is like done by 12. But it's simple things like that. Like what yeah. you're saying, it's about understanding the team. And I think also, you know, whether you were talking about a Gen Z, because some of us are managing Gen Zs yeah, now. Yeah. That's a lot, yeah. but you're realizing, oh, they want to be uh, communicated in a specific way. Yeah. So I like it because what I'm getting from what you're laying down is the fact that you have to be very people centric. Yeah. You have to understand the person behind the brand and not just that we need to execute, yeah, you know? Completely. Yeah. And then speaking of output, right? Um, I mean, I'm no stranger to your brand. I love it. And this is obviously an unbiased opinion. And, you know, the work you guys have done, it's not just about let's put, you know, beer in people's hands you know yeah. you really are thinking about sustainability yeah. you're thinking about how do you make it a better environment for people yeah. you know and you're speaking to male and female consumers and i love what you guys are doing even in the female space as well yeah. right i feel seen and represented yeah. so having said all of that yeah. is there a particular campaign that maybe you're working on or just wrapped that maybe you want to highlight but now we're getting it from the horse's mouth oh, of wow. like kind the of pleasure. the inspiration yeah. behind it yeah, no, so thanks for that. It's been a, it's been a journey for the last two years yeah. um, in terms of really shifting our approach of you know, speaking to a different demographic, yeah. female consumer, because we were known as the Champions Beer, Champions League, yeah. and, and that's it. And But we hold international creds and only things Heineken can do. And very proud like to say only things yeah. that Heineken can do. What we are working on is a completely changing the game in terms of Heineken in South Africa. It's massive for the alcohol yeah. beverage. And we're really looking at sustainability from a different perspective. Okay. So we are currently in a, a one-way bottle. And um, if you look at the inside, we are enjoyed by many, but then we just discarded in, in yeah, the communities, etc. And we are moving to a returnable bottle. So very different okay. for a premium brand to step into the space. Yeah. But our consumers are loving it. The, the work we've done behind the scenes, they are loving how we are thinking of the community. Sure. There's not going to be uh, fields of uh, glass. But now there will be fields of grass, and what we are doing, we're going to be like setting that. up. Yeah. We're going to be setting up green zones in, in communities where we're doing a cleanup sure. of the one-way bottles, and we're going to be repurposing it into you know centers of uh, entrepreneurial or just a place I where people come and, re and relax and enjoy yourself. Just making it really cyclical and purposeful. Proper, mm -hmm. and what I'm very proud about is that all the glass that we're collecting, we're literally replowing it back into the community center that we're going to be doing, or yeah. green zone, not community center. Yeah. And it could be like the glasses used in the paving. The ring I'm actually wearing right now is from yeah. the one-way bottle. Yeah. We're making medallions that you can wear on your bags, etc. So we're really Very trying simple. to put it in the forefront that you a have a badge piece. Of honor. Yeah, you have a piece of the campaign sure. with you. Mm. So we're very chuffed about it mm. um, because it's really driving that sustainability mm. gene and showing that, yeah. you know, 
feels green I with glass that. is yeah. not anymore. Yeah. It now feels green with glass. And I love it because obviously from what I'm getting is that you're really understanding the consumer and even that cyclical approach about it's not just that we're doing what needs to be done, but then how you come back and even if it's coming down to streetwear, yeah. fashion wear, right? Yeah. It's about saying it doesn't need to be overly massage. It just needs to be simplistic and it needs to be functional. 100%. And I love that. Yeah. No, I wish you guys all the best. Thank I will you. definitely be watching out for it and yeah. doing my part. And I think just to end off, you know, like today's chat was very inspiring because I think that what I'm really getting about you is the fact that you will never be perfect because I think people have this this level that they want to attain. You know, if you get to be a director or yeah. a global head, no, it's like your faults are embraced with you, and you're being very vulnerable that you're consistently learning. Yeah. You know, so I really hope that the guys out there take that. So Thank having you. said that, and no pressure, what advice would you give me? and maybe the rest of my peers in terms of as we move yeah. on and up in this marketing space because you know you've had lows and you've had highs yeah. and you probably i always say this line and i forget who, who said it first always share from a scar not a wound because yeah. often yeah. you you are so in that That's moment yeah. it is it I'm steal that, but I'm we have to it. find out who said it guys because <laughs> i'm not going to say i i came up with it and for the longest time i would just be so like in my moments like yeah. oh i failed this or i failed that and i let time kind of lay out and then i'm like cool now i look back and i'm like oh it's a scar and it's beautiful oh, yeah. and now i can do it so dear oracle and there's a story to the scar though eh? yes and that people can learn from exactly and, and i think there's a whole narrative behind it versus the wound oh it's open i need to go yeah see and then it. that's when you also like there's a lot of um things that are very uncharacteristic of you yeah. you know because sometimes you might lash out yeah. or you even we've all done it you've decided to like say i'm moving to another role yeah. you know as well as you just stood sat and said okay cool let me get the lesson that i need to learn yeah. right now yeah. you know yeah. so having said that you know what kind of advice would you give myself and the rest of your marketing peers just in terms of how they approach their career yeah. and uh, they move on and up is there a specific yeah. lesson maybe i think there's a couple um one is as you move along in your career don't discard all the learnings that you have. Take, take the learnings with you. Carry it and build that bank and that golden nuggets and carry along yeah. the, the journey. And what I mean by the journey is, like we spoke of, left and right yeah. doesn't have to be linear. It is a journey. Sometimes the journey is even going to cause you to have a pause mm. and maybe just jump ship from whatever you have to do. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And, and be okay with it. I think a lot of people can also learn from being humble and don't have entitlement. That when you get the title, you are expected to do this. It's okay to yeah. fail forward. Yeah. It's okay. And yeah. I think you need to be comfortable in your own skin and learn that, that you never got to where you are just by yourself. You got there with other people. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do is remember the people that got you there and carry them with you. So I think that's the, Beautifully said. the simplistic view I can give. No, no, thank you, Marcel. I mean, I'm going to come back to you in eight years for more advice, yeah, right? We'll Listen. see. We'll see where Listen. we are in eight Listen. years. Eh? No, but thank you so much for this chat. I think that the guys out there, especially those that like, want to get into marketing, yeah. we are, this is what this podcast is about. It's about seeing influential people behind brands and also in culture saying, you know what? It wasn't an overnight success. Yeah. This is what I'm still battling with yeah. and I love it. And, you know, we love the work that you're doing and definitely come back again, yeah. you know, when you have you. more nuggets to drop. And we it. will be tuning into his podcast. Cost. Yes, coming yes. soon, eh? <laughs> coming soon. People manager podcast. Coming <laughs> Thank soon. Thank you so much, guys. See ya. Thank you. Ciao. Cool.